Hey, how you doing? Where do fish keep all of their money? In the riverbank. Today, in this episode, we're going to visit some fishing and boating tips that I wish that I knew a year ago. My very first tip that I would give any new fisherman is to learn a braid to monofilament knot. I use an FG knot using a tension method in my teeth and uh, then I'll normally tighten it up with a couple of old boat rollers that I have handy in my boat all the time. So you're not wrapping it around your arms or your, your hands and, and cutting yourself. So definitely go out there and learn a braid to mono knot because nobody wants to look like that idiot that ties swivels in between their braid and their mono. We've all been there. There are heaps of tutorials how to learn that knot online and there's also multiple different apps that you can download and install to just check up knots in general. Secondly, if you're chasing sports fish, you need to have a couple of gaffs on board. You might lose one overboard, or you might get a double or a triple hookup, and you get a better rate of fish in the boat if you've got two there and you don't have a cue to use your gaff. If you are chasing bigger creatures and bigger specimens like shark or swordfish, having a flying gaff is essential to land that fish. I have a flying gaff that sits up the front of my boat and it actually compacts down really nice and tidy. I don't even notice it's there, but when you are chasing the bigger creatures, out she comes. This next step is pivotal for getting from A to B and also the maintenance of your trailer boat. And that is to always carry a toolbox full of essentials to get you out of strife. This may include having extra rollers for your trailer, washers, long nose pliers, a hammer, an adjustable wrench, additional bearings, bung plugs, a Phillips head and flathead screwdriver. The amount of times that I've relied on my toolbox is ridiculous. I can't count it on one hand. So definitely go out of your way to create a toolbox for your trailer boat. This next one is pretty obvious to some people, but for those unorganized fishermen out there, label your shit. I have different tackle boxes labeled up for jigging, deep dropping, top water, bait fishing, rigging up, a whole separate box for all of my different leaders, and the amount of times that something happens while you're out fishing and you need to quickly swap the style of fishing you're doing, to have a separate box of what you need is just life-saving and it gets you more time in the water. Now in my tinny, in my early days, I have made the mistake of being out at sea and not keeping an eye on my fuel. Luckily, I was able to drain my fuel filter that got a little bit of water in it and also fill up with a spare jerry can. However, I highly recommend before you go out on each trip, either keeping your boat full because no fuel gauge will ever give you an accurate reading and also resetting your trip intel so you can see how much fuel you've used. A good captain will always be thinking about his fuel consumption and checking how much he's used throughout the trip. Now I'm guilty for this one and sometimes in the spare of the moment you forget, but always use a rubber net if you are planning on releasing fish. If you're releasing and tagging fish, use a rubber net and have a nice cushion landing for them to sit on. If you look at some of the Tuna Champions videos done by iFish, they have nice little foam mattresses for them to drag their tuna onto and sit on whilst they tag them up. And speaking of releasing fish, single hooks. You don't want to be running treble hooks if you are releasing fish. It makes so much mess and the survival rate just goes way downhill if you're using trebles. Now this next one, a lot of people probably don't know about, but when you are tuna fishing or if you're landing a fish, Having the boat in gear is really going to increase your chance of being able to get a tail grab on it. I know when you're wheeling in tuna, you just wanna be there in idle, but when you've got a boat side and your hands on the leader, having the boat in gear is going to float that fish to the top. You can grab the tail and get him in. Alongside servicing, it's also absolutely quintessential that you stay on top of the safety gear that you need on your boat. That includes having your four separate flares, your life ring to throw out, a radar reflector that is also said to boost your VHF frequency and distance and clarity when you're on your VHF. So, I don't know, I'm not sure about that one. If you do know that that is confirmed fact, please drop a comment down below. Does a radar reflector actually increase your VHF bandwidth? Make sure that you are fishing within regulations when it comes to minimum size, boat limits, etc. I identify any new species that I catch using the Taz Fish Guide and I check my bag limits as well on the app. 
If you have it downloaded, you should be able to use it when you're out of reception out on the water. So definitely download the Taz Fish Guide. I'm sure for other fisheries around Australia, they have apps as well that you can utilize. So be sure to search one that's relevant to you. If you are planning on keeping your fish, it is absolutely essential that you look after them if you want it to taste nice as well. So bleeding them and getting them on ice as soon as possible, even dropping the guts inside of them, is essential if you want a good eating fish. When I'm out boating, I always pack some frozen drink bottles with water in them just in case my ice melts and if I can't get ice from a service station somewhere near where I am. I have seven or eight of these that I sit in my esky so I can get at least a couple of days of coolness if need be. And it costs nothing to do as well. So hold on to your plastic drink bottles, fill them up with water and use them as ice packs in your esky. If you do have a nice big deep freezer like I do in my garage, I'm very fortunate. Hold on to some of your fish carcasses as well. You never know when you're going to need burley and some days when you go out there and you're looking for fresh bait, you just can't find it. So having a nice big carcass of something you've previously caught, it's so handy to have stock in your freezer. Now that's it, that's all I've got for a couple of tricks and tips for you from what I've learned over the last year or so. I hope it helps you out there on the water. Drop a comment down below as well if you have any suggestions of odd tips that you just don't think people will know about or use. Because you know, this is all about sharing information and knowledge so we can all have the best possible time out there on the water and catch bulk fish.